goodness, we have microphones! Woohoo! <laughs> uh oh, hold on. We have two microphones, Yay! ladies and gentlemen, and we are in action. Thank you. We're good. Two. Two and three. All right. We got a battle of fifth versus six here. On the line, jamming for Dallas, it's Ramthrax up against Dr. Spankenstein for Pioneer Valley. And Ramthrax is your lead jammer. Dr. Spankenstein still in that pack, working his way through. Wall of red up front. Down to the lone one, and he makes it through his initial pass. Nice tight pack right now. Oh, someone's and heading to the penalty box. Wasting no time warming those seats over in the penalty area. And Ramthrax is going to call this jam off. After scoring two points for Dallas, that brings our score. Dallas 2, Pioneer Valley 4. Number 615, Mars Travolta, back on the track and jamming. Going up against number 32, Haterade. Oh, 7 to 2, Pioneer Valley. Both jammers working their way through the pack. Big spill there coming out of line, coming out of corner two. And it looks like Haterade is your lead jammer. Little jammer on jammer action right here. Mars Travolta and Haterade. Oh, Mars Travolta knocking Haterade out. And he decides to call it. So with no score on that jam, we are still at two for Dallas, seven for Pioneer Valley. Little jammer line on the love shared by Jurassic Park from Pioneer Valley. That looks like name number John Smack and Roll. Smack and Roll. I see number 88. Ninja, please. Oh, what's the name? Hey, killing me. I, I get it. I see what he did there. He's ninja. being a ninja. He's pretending to be someone else. Ninja, please. However, he is not lead. The lead goes to Pioneer Valley's very own Giraffe Kick Park. <laughs> very loose pack right now coming out of turn two. And a little hit it and quit it action for Giraffe Kick Park. Three points for the Dirty Dozen. That's going to take us to Dallas 2, Pioneer Valley 10. Pioneer Valley holding on to that lead. Up next on the line for Dallas, that's going to be 0, zero Matomic. Standing out there next to 113, Dr. Spankenstein. So far, Pioneer Valley holding a three lead jam to one advantage over Dallas. Successful in getting lead jammer yet again, the Dirty Dungeon. Dr. Spankenstein says, thank you very much. We're going to end this jam. I had a feeling he might be calling it off with the big wings yes. spread out. Very, very animated with his calling off gesture. Nothing wrong with that. Next up on the line for Pioneer Valley, it's Mars Travolta going up against 180 Archie Nemesis. Sometimes that 30 seconds feels so long, my friend. <laughs> yes, it does. I think that's more or less just because we want to see a whole lot more derby action. That's quite possible. Do not be fooled. That first whistle did blow, my friends. <laughs> little slow play here. A little strategy. Right now it's Pioneer Valley's game to win. I know it's early in, but wasting the clock like this is just doing them a favor. Back, back, back. 
And finally, the Jammers are sent off. They're making their way through the pack. And looks like we've got somebody being sent off. Marsh Travolta through the pack lead. Jammer for the Dirty Dozen. Ooh, Dr. Spankenstein heading to the box for Pioneer Valley, sitting down for a minute. That's now three lead jammers in a row now for Pioneer Valley. It's not too shabby, especially considering the fact that they just skated a full bout against Puget Sound. Mars grabs a quick four before calling it off, extending the Pioneer Valley lead to 14 to two. Mr. Fancy Socks himself, Jurassic Park on the line for the Dirty Dozen. And for Dallas, it's number 90, Ramthrax. Little legal procedure coming off the pivot line. Ooh, Jurassic Park juking around, going through the inside lead jammer. Pioneer Valley, very successful with lead jammer so far. That would be four in a row now for Pioneer Valley. And six of the last seven. Ain't too bad. Hit it and quit it action. Jurassic Park takes his points, calls it off. Seems to be the modus operandi so far today of the Pioneer Valley team. They'll grab quick points, call it off, reset, and we'll go at it again. Oh, you and your fancy big words. <laughs> Got to show off that education somewhere. <laughs> there you go. Mars Travolta back out on the jammer line for the Dirty Dozen. Those are our gentlemen in the camo and tan. Ninja Please out there sporting the red of Dallas. Ninja Please. Going to see if Ninja Please can break the streak that Pioneer Valley has built up, and he cannot, as Mars Travolta is announced your lead jammer. Not a lot of Dallas out there in the pack. Two blockers sitting in the box. Yep, hard to block when you're down by two blockers. I agree. So, as we said, Pioneer Valley enjoying a four-on-two situation in the pack right now. And yet again, Pioneer Valley grabs a quick four and calls it off. A quick hit. Hey, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that. Many a bout has been won by nickel and diamond, the score. Those points add up quick on these short jams. They sure do. Currently, Pioneer Valley with 22, Dallas at 2. Pioneer Valley, uh, Dirty Dozen, very successful with holding Dallas to that low, low score. Jurassic Kick Park back on the jammer line for the Dirty Dozen. For Dallas, that's going to be Haterade. Both our jammers working their way through the pack. Wall of tan up front. Haterade can't squeeze through, or can he? Oh, he squeezed around. There you go, lead hey. jammer. Haterade breaks the street. But fear not. Jurassic Park not that far behind. Jurassic turning on the Jets. Pew. Are you doing sound effects for me now? Yes. Sweet. <laughs> I like this. Pioneer Valley not able to put any points on the board. That pass, Dallas scored one. I'll take it. One is better than none. I agree. Announcer math is fuzzy, but yes. I agree with that. Last I checked. Dr. Spankenstein out there for the Dirty Dozen. And that would be Matomic out there for Dallas. Third, actually. A little slow start there, coming over that pivot line. Slow. I'm just excited to see skaters actually using the pivot line. <laughs> this, this is definitely a change of pace. I know. There's that second whistle. That's what we want to see. Our jammers are free. Lead jammer, Dirty Dozen, Dr. Spankenstein. Even though he is not the jammer in the lead, he does have the lead jammer status. We all know what that means. Uh, Matomic putting on the Jets, looking to get to the pack quick and force Spankenstein to call off the jam. 
A very fast pack, and Matomic is able to squeak out a point there right before the jam was called off. Remember, boys and girls, skaters score points till the fourth whistle. And our eagle-eyed refs saw that one point sneak in there. Up on the line for Dallas, it's Ninja Please going up against Mars Travolta for Pioneer Valley. <laughs> All right, our pack is off, as is our jammers. Coming out of turn two, the both jammers deep in the pack, and now Mars Travolta jumps out front and grabs lead jammer for Pioneer Valley. Very impressive work right here by Pioneer Valley. Remember, they just skated a full hour bout against Puget Sound, and they are out here acting like they just woke up fresh and clean. Yeah, and so far they have definitely had dominance in the lead jammer stats as they are up 9-2 to two on lead jams over Dallas at the moment. Looks like Pioneer Valley was able to squeak out one point there on that last pass. Dallas calling a team timeout. This team timeout brought to you by Cheeseball Bearings, platinum sponsor of the MRDA. Thank you so much to Cheeseball Bearings. They are the headlining sponsor of the championship bout. Mmm, Cheeseballs. You know the best part about Cheeseball Bearings? What? They're named after cheese. Yes. Cheddar, Do they Swiss, actually have little Gouda? cheese balls in the I, bearing? I imagine that would smell somewhat. That but it might not be good. real cheese. It I would, think. It would turn into, like, blue cheese eventually. Blue cheese is good. Not to skate on. I think it's metal. Oh, uh, okay. Right. But it's still a cool name. So thank you so much to Cheeseball Bearings. Make sure and check them out. They are right here on Rank 1. If you are watching on the lovely Derby News Network feed, check them out online. Cheeseballswiththez.com. So a quick score update. We got Pioneer Valley up 23 to 4 over Dallas. And we're about to get back into action. Jurassic Park on the line for Pioneer Valley. Looks like Ramthrax out there for Dallas. Such a good name, Ramthrax. They're from the Big D, and I'm not talking about divorce. <laughs> Wait, that's not. Strike. <laughs> Strike that. Oh, little, little cat and mouse, a little booty booty. Yeah. They're from Jurassic Park. You liked that, didn't you? I did. I, I enjoyed it. Big pile up there going yeah, into turn one. <laughs> Looks like the IE last <laughs> night. However, he is through. He is your lead jammer. That is Jurassic Park of the Dirty Dozen. So far, Pioneer Valley continuing their dominance and jamming as they are now up 10-2 to 2 in lead jammer situations. It's like Pioneer Valley has one player in the penalty box at the moment as that jam comes to an end. And Pioneer Valley puts three on the board. They're extending their lead to 26 to four. Dallas currently with the pack advantage, two dirty dozen skaters, skating a little too dirty, sitting in the penalty box. Looks like Marsh Travolta will be starting off this jam, jamming for the dirty dozen. And it looks like he's up against Matomic. Oh wait, no, that's not Matomic. It's not, it's Archie Nemesis. Yes. And he's through lead jammer for da -da -da Dallas. Uh-oh, looks like he might get, oh, sped right by Mars Travolta out front. Woo! Oh, ref takeout. Yo, that gentleman a beverage. Z-Dork with a nice little jump there to get over Archie. No points scored on that jam, so the score remains 26 Pioneer Valley, Dallas 4. Next up, now we've got Matomic out there going up against, looks like, Spank Dr. Spankstein. Spank. Yes. And this is actually the first time these two teams have faced off against each other, so this is quite exciting to see. 
And we've got a no pack, which immediately sends off the jammers. So big max, big mix up there going into turn one. And Matomic is able to squeak out and grab lead jammer for Dallas. Dr. Spankenstein getting caught up in the pack there. Crimson Wall of Pain up at the front. Makes it through the initial pass. So Matomic's going to grab four for Dallas, bringing them to eight. While Pioneer Valley unable to put any points on the board, that jam. This next jam being brought to you by Brews Boutique. Brews Boutique for all of your derby needs. Check them out online, www.brewsboutique.com. Once again, it's Haterade on the line for Dallas. He's out there standing next to the one and only Jurassic Park. A lot of really great names you're going to see in this bout. And Haterade is your lead jammer. That's the third lead jam for Dallas in a row now. Obviously, the timeout helped. It does appear that that little regroup was able to help Dallas get their wits about them. However, 68, Dick Diamond on his way to the penalty box. Jurassic Park clearing the pack just in time for the jam to end. No points on the board for the Dirty Dozen in that pass. And it looks like Dallas put up five. Mars Travolta out there jamming for our gentlemen in tan and camo. And Ninja, please, on the line for Dallas. I don't, I don't see a jammer out there for Dallas. Is that because he's a ninja? Oh, yes. Uh, I see yeah, what you see? did there. Yeah. Sneaky. Longest 30 seconds in my life. <laughs> I imagine Ninja is hoping that Pioneer Valley's blockers don't see him either. Well, you know, you could also go with uh, Pioneer Valley with the camo. You can't really see them oh. either. Now, does that cancel them out? Uh, only their bottom halves. Oh, it's a good thing they gave us these special glasses to be able <laughs> to see them. I believe the DNN viewers also have the special yes. glasses. We're watching this via infrared. So if you're taking a look at the track and you see Jurassic Park uh, behind the jammer line, he is not lost. He's doing something. I'll explain it in a second. Just give me a minute. I don't want to ruin the surprise. <laughs> All right. So Jurassic Park actually had three minor penalties. That fourth intentional penalty sent him to the box. It's all about using your time wisely. In the meantime, his teammate, Marsh Travolta, threw the pack. The jammer for the Dirty Dozen. And Davy Jones being sent off for what appeared to be a major elbow. Two Pioneer. Dirty Dozen skaters in the box. Pack advantage goes to Dallas. Oh, up until now, two blockers from each team in the box. It's a little baby pack. Ditty witty bitty. You know what that means? We've got a penalty box dance party going on over oh, right now. Oh, is that a fact? The penalty box is full. That means they should be dancing. Dr. Spankenstein back out on the jammer line for Pioneer Valley's Dirty Dozen. Currently, Pioneer Valley at 30, Dallas at 13. That team timeout certainly helped. So now we're going to have Ramthrax up against, it looks like, Dr. Spankenstein. It's true. Oh, it's true. And Ramthrax is your lead jammer. Dallas right now clawing their way back into this bout, scoring points here and there. Just under 12 minutes left here in this first half. Both these teams really jockeying for position. Dallas making it through, scoring four points and calling it off. Yep, Dallas taking advantage of the two-on-two -two pack. A lot of room for jammers to move out there when there's only four blockers total. And why the heck not? I would too. 
So we got Matomic back out there for Dallas. And no stranger to the man, Mars Travolta. Travolta. Threw an R in there, Mars Travolta. <laughs> it just rolls right it off does. the tongue. It does. Smooth like butter. Like butter. All right. Oh. Taking a knee, causing a no-pack situation, uh, springing the jammer. I think we're going to see our first power jam here. Mars Travolta taking a major back lock there on the start. So now Dallas with an opportunity here to really get back into this game, only down by 13. Matama can erase that lead very quickly. This is exactly what Dallas was looking for. We'll see if this is their chance. Pioneer Valley got the lead early and held onto it successfully. There you go, four points for Dallas. Atomic very fast, so if you give him any room at all, he will shoot through there quick. Although it is a power jam for Dallas, they currently have two blockers in the box. That does not make it easy for that jammer to get through. So Matomic's going to grab nine and call it off, and we're going to reset here. Slowly closing that gap. Great teamwork there by Dallas. They are, as Dallas is now only down by four, as it's 26 to 30 in favor of Pioneer Valley. That's one pass, my friend. We're under the 10 minute mark. Dallas will be starting unopposed. Who do we have out there, Hammer? That would be Archie Nemesis out there for Dallas, unopposed. Not a lot of his friends are out there on the track. No. Oh. No pack situation. Pioneer and Valley letting him go, and he's through for lead. <laughs> oh, got a little bit of action there coming out of turn four into the front straightaway. That's going to be a grand slam for Archie Nemesis, which is going to give Dallas their first lead of the game. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. If you're playing the DNN drinking game, take a drink. There has been a lead change. <laughs> Number 113, Dr. Spankenstein, out there for the Dirty Dozen. And that's going to be Ninja Please out there for Dallas. I didn't even see him. I was actually told that by their team. I can't oh, see thank him either. God. I was so lost. <laughs> Looks like two blockers from each team in the penalty box. This is the smallest little baby pack I've ever seen in my life. These small packs definitely favor your more quick and agile skaters, so we're going to see who gets through. And it looks like it's going to be Spankenstein jumping through and grabbing Lee Jam for Pioneer Valley. Doesn't look like Ninja Please is that far behind him, though. Oh, knocks him to the inside. Took a quick knee, but he's back up. Dallas enjoying a three on two. Actually, I take that back, a four on two pack advantage. Goose eggs for both teams. Dallas holds the lead with one point. One da stinking point. Dallas doing a very nice job on that jam, stinking speeding point. up the pack, preventing Spankenstein from scoring any points. I got to say, I get crushes on skaters that talk to announcers, and Rhino <laughs> just talked to me. I uh, actually, crush. I think he was talking to me. Oh, well, then you so can have not, a crush yeah, on him. Yeah, I got a crush on him now. I got a crush on him earlier when he laid a monster hit over on rank one against the Misfits. Yes. And then he pounded his chest. Oh, <laughs> the testosterone. I could smell it from my seat. All right, we got Haterade jamming right now for Dallas. Mars Travolta out there for the Dirty Dozen. Very physical bout so far here. These teams definitely not shying away, even though they both played a game previously today. They are still right out there mixing it up, beating each other up for your enjoyment. And I got to tell you, contrary to popular belief and uh, popular podcast, I have seen a lot of teamwork out here on this track. Um, <laughs> yes, absolutely. Oh, looks like Bulk Bogan heading to the box for Dallas. Did you hear that, brother? Whoa. You're about to wrestle me. <laughs> looks like we have a 
Timeout. Team timeout. Looks like uh, for Pioneer, Pioneer Valley. Valley. <laughs> I. I gotta send a lot of love going out to the DJs. I feel like their music selections are very intentional. They have been a very good, uh, very good selection I've heard so far today. Very good selection. Disco party here at the announcer stage. Like, I know, right? We need a. Can we get like a, one of those mirror balls or something? It's, 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 it's. However, this team timeout is the perfect opportunity to let me, let you know about some amazing Derby sponsors. First of all, DNN. Derby News Network. If you are not on Long Island, you are probably watching this bout on DNN. Derby News Network is largely community supported. So if you're watching right now, please don't be a bum. Contribute. Go ahead. Give a little money over. If you're drinking Starbucks, it's, you know, cheaper than that to support DNN. And you get to watch amazing Derby like the MRDA Championships coming to you right now. If you've never been to DNN and you're in-house, when you get home, make sure and check it out. DerbyNewsNetwork.com to watch the hard-hitting, fast-moving sport that's exploding all over the world. All right, we're about to get back to action. Matomic on the line for Dallas up against Dr. Spankenstein for Pioneer Valley. Dr. Spankenstein, he's got to be a macho man. Matomic has grabbed lead jam status on his last two times on the line. And make and it three, my three. friend. Oh, no, not three. Oh. Looks like he's heading to the penalty box. Dr. Spankenstein, lead jammer for the Dirty Dozen. That's what I get for opening my big trap. See, you jinxed it. See what you did? They can blame me later. Nah. And that's going to be a uh, grand that slam for Dr. Spankenstein. Pioneer Valley tying it up 35 to 35, but not after this pass. Getting knocked to the inside there, coming back in. A little cutting penalty there, but he is through the pack. Taking back the lead for the Dirty Dozen. Four big points on the board. Yep, only grabs four there because of a minor track cut. And a Dallas player on their way to the penalty box. That's going to be 68 double D. Mr. Diamond on his way to the penalty box. Dr. Spankenstein with the eagle eye on the pack. He's watching everything that's happening. Atomic back out and has now made his initial pass. Dr. Spankenstein now working his way through the pack. And he's going to call it off. I think he grabbed a few there. Looks like three. And Hammer, it looks like next door on rank one, the bout just finished up. New York Shock Exchange with the win, 139 over Magic City, 131. What wow. a close bout. Woo, woo. Goodness gracious. So now we're going to see the New York Shock Exchange take on the winner of the two o'clock bout between the St. Louis Gatekeepers and the Puget Sound Outcasts. It's going to be some good derby, my friend. That it is. Jurassic Park out there jamming for the Dirty Dozen. However, out there jamming for Dallas, that's number 22, MC Slamma, lead jammer. Slamma, don't hurt him. No. Oh. Thank goodness he's not wearing those big pants. I feel like that would hinder him. Yeah, he'd probably get tangled up in them. I agree. Pioneer Valley able to put four points on the board. 47 to 37. They took back that lead. They're holding on to it. Just under four minutes left in the first half. Oh, I lied. See? That scoreboard making a liar on me. Pioneer <laughs> Valley 51, Dallas 37. We'd like to welcome all of you heading on over here from that Shock Exchange Magic City epic bout. We have Dr. Oh. Spankenstein out there jamming for the Dirty Dozen coming around that turn. Big hit there. No pass, no penalty. On Ramthrax. He gets through first, but he is not lead jammer. 
Oh, look at that. No lead jammer for Pioneer Valley either. This is a two-minute jam, ladies and gentlemen. And I can't tell you how much jammers and skaters alike love marathon jams. They, they sure love do. those two-minute long jams. They surely do, my friend. Oh, Woo. pile up at the back of the pack. Spinkenstein with the whip off of Jurassic, making it around. Four points for the Dirty Dozen. Davy Jones trailing Dallas's jammer into the pack. Dallas's jammer with one man to beat, and he does get, oh, but he takes a tumble. Dallas and successfully forming that big, scary red wall. Pioneer Valley doing a nice job cycling blockers. However, Dallas is able to put four. Although Ramthrax looks to be in a lot of pain. Thinking he may have twisted something in that earlier pileup on the back straightaway. Dr. Spankenstein almost through that pass. Dallas really laying it on hard. Dallas with only two blockers currently in the pack doing a really nice job with that front wall. However, Pioneer Valley does a nice job breaking up the pack, freeing Spankenstein. Dr. Spankenstein through the pack, another four points for the Dirty Dozen. That was a long two minutes, my friend. Yes, it was. And after all that skating, it looks like we only had eight points scored total. Unreal. Number 615, Mars Travolta, out on the line for the Dirty Dozen. Those are our gentlemen in tan and camo out there. Up there for Dallas in the red. That would be Matomic. Got a nice little streak going right now as he has been lead jam the last four times he's been up on the line. We'll see if he can stretch that out here. And it looks like we got an official time out here. Looks like there's some discussion on penalty count. And we're about to get back into action here. Hammer, you know the difference between an official timeout and a team timeout. <laughs> I'm a, I don't know. Where, I don't. Not sure. I like oh, where no, this is going. Oh no, it's not a joke. It's a fact. Oh okay. It's just official timeouts last as long as the officials want. Uh, fair enough. Fair enough. You were waiting for a bad joke to come. I, I know. Was, I saw yeah, the look I, on the face. I kind of expected a pun or something to afraid. come out of that. I'm not very punny. <laughs> ah, there's my pun. Again, thank you to everyone joining us on the interwebs. DNN so graciously boutcasting every bout today. Derby News Network is the hub of live derby video. If you're in-house and you haven't checked them out before, I don't know why. But again, www.derbynewsnetwork.com. Alrighty, so that official timeout would look to be to go over some penalty counts and to add some more time to the clock as we are now back up over one minute left in this half. Coming into this jam, Pioneer Valley with the lead, 59 over Dallas, 42. It's been a close bout, couple of lead exchanges. Matomic through first, however, he is not lead jam. Just goes to show you, just because you are the jammer in the lead does not mean you are the lead jammer. That belongs to Mars Travolta. He's got his wings spread. And he calls it. Wow, Matomic with a huge burst there, right as that first whistle blew, was able to grab one point before that fourth whistle went off. He was very excited about that one point. Well, that was a pretty impressive play. He deserves to be excited. Six ish seconds left in the first half. Looks like maybe an official timeout. Oh, wow. Looks like we're going to get one more jam this half now. 
This timeout, whether it's a team or an official timeout, is brought to you by the one and only Adam Wheels. Adam Wheels is, of course, the makers of the amazing wheels that many of the skaters out here are on. Also, they are providing the MVP award, which will be presented by the MRDA's game official committee head, who is Wu from the Quadfathers of Utica, New York. I myself skate on strokers. They're very nice. Oh, I see. You know what else I see a lot of out here? Rydell boots. Yes. Those fancy Rydell boots. Thank you so much to sponsor Rydell boots. Lots of derby love from the MRDA. All right, we are about to get back into action here. What is probably going to be the last, it's definitely going to be the last jam of this half. On the line for Dallas, that's 180 Archie Nemesis. And you know him and you love him, Mr. Fancy Socks coming through with not lead. Oh, Jurassic Park. <laughs> Archie quickly calls off the jam. He wants to go into the half. I thought I had the nice setup. Negative. All right, that is the half. At the half, your score is going to be Pioneer Valley 59, Dallas 43. Our next game coming up at 3 p.m. That is, again, the St. Louis Gatekeepers uh, playing against the winners there. And that was, was Puget, Sound, Puget or, Sound Outcast. We're going to see a rematch of a spring roll bout in which the gatekeepers pretty much steamrolled Puget Sound, winning by over 100 points. Ah, but could they do the same this time? That's going to be the question. P uh, Puget Sound looked very strong in their win over Pioneer Valley earlier today. So we got a quick half time and we will be right back.
orangnya. Ladies and gents, make sure that you are heading down to the far end of rank one and visiting Point and Shoot, Long Island Roller Rebels' very own and former Hellion of Troy skater, Point and Shoot, an amazing photographer. She will take your picture. That's right. She can even make me look pretty. Aw, you're pretty. You're so pretty. We also want to remind you that we have a concession stand here. Of course, you can get uh, anything you'd like to eat. You can get yourself a an adult beverage, I understand. The barley and hops kind. Nice. And we also want to give a big shout out to Pepsi who provide us, provided us with all the O water. Oh. Oh. Water. Uh, it was the O water. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Hey, hi. And of course, this is the halftime of the Dallas Deception Pioneer Valley Dirty Dozen Bob. Uh, I would assume that by now you probably know that in a very tight bout, New York's Shock Exchange defeats the Magic City Misfits. The Shock Exchange advancing to the championships, the Misfits to the 3 4 bout. Special thanks and derby love going out to, of course, our officials, our referees and non-skating officials out there making roller derby happen. Thank you so much. They have a long day working all these here bouts. Yeah, they always have a long day. I tell you, the guys, the guys and gals on skates, uh, they get an exceptional amount of exercise. God bless them. Yeah, because I'm totally against that myself. We sit here. I know. We just sit and look pretty. Uh, well, one of us does. Aw. Wait, which one? <laughs> you. Don't answer. Don't answer. <laughs> you know, skaters. Aw, Ninja, please. Watch it. Watch it. You know, skaters are out there talking about, oh, I'm tired. I just skated, you know, every other jam. Referees skate every single jam. you got to keep that in mind. That's right. So that's, why, that's why I don't do that. That's why, me neither. I could. You I could. I can actually skate. Oh, really? I actually own a set of Adam Wheels, one Ooh. of our sponsors, our gold sponsor, who we want to thank. The question is, do you own Rydell Boots? I believe I do. <laughs> He's unsure of his boot selection. If you don't, you certainly should. Rydell Boots, proud sponsor of the MRDA Championships. And you can check them out right here. At the championships, they have a table. Yeah, that's right. Go talk to Conan the Vegetarian. An amazing ref himself. Uh, he, he is. I don't know if he's really a vegetarian, do you? I, I have not been privy to his dietary practices. <laughs> However, he, he, looks, he looks the kind, if you know what I mean. He's got that look. <laughs> I went to a ref clinic with him. I can make fun of him a little bit. Oh, well, no, you can make fun of them one way or the other. I mean, <laughs> You're like, you need no permission. So what? Some, yeah. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. You know, I'm sure I'll take it if I have it. Looks like starting out the second half, Dr. Spankenstein on the line for our gentleman in tan and camo, Pioneer Valley Dirty Dozen. Yep, and I believe that's going to be Metomic that is up for Dallas. Pioneer Valley with the pack advantage. Couple of Dallas blockers in the box. The whistle did blow. Don't be confused. They're just taking their time. That's right. And they get rolling. Atomic's going to hit the front of the pack. And, oh, a nice hip lock right there. You're going to have a hard time getting around. In the meantime, look at that. We're going to see Dr. Dr. Spankenstein. Very and nice. Lead jammer, Ida. Pioneer Valley doing a heck of a job of keeping Matomic back. A 
little move of strategy there, calling off the jam. He's going to stop that before they score any points. And, of course, Uncle Jesse McNasty coming up just to put a little fear factor in there. Why not? Marsh Travolta out on the jammer line for the Dirty Dozen. As in Ninja, please. Ninja, please. <laughs> Pioneer Valley able to squeak one point out on that last pass there. PBRD holding on to that lead. 60 to Dallas is 43. You got to be rad. Never knew he was such a dancer until this particular uh, tournament. It's the DJs. They're just doing such a great job. They are, actually. <laughs> In fact, we should probably give them a shout out, and we will. And a little contact as Mars Mars forces Ninja Police to the outside of the track, and we got Ninja Police working the inside. He's got. Can they open the door for him? Yes, he gets through, but he will not be your lead jammer, Ida. Pioneer Valley Jammer currently sitting in the box. Marsh Travolta, the next minute, belongs to Ninja, please. And right there, he's going to make his first scoring pass. That's a full five. That's a grand slam. We're going to eat it, Denny's. Very nice. This is exactly what Dallas needs, Bob. Currently down in the score, they can close up that gap. But not if Pioneer Valley has anything to do with it. Dirty Dozen holding that wall up front. Oh, too far out front. Happened to let him go. Nice trap run by Dallas. He's got over a minute left on his jam clock. Let's see what he can do with it. Oh, oh on the outside. Nice move. Almost nice. completely untouched. A little shake and bake on the outside. And then holds the outside lane for him. Two-point difference in the lead right here. Not for long. Ninja, please show us some amazing moves. He's gotten through that pack both times pretty much untouched. And that time, I have a feeling, yep. Oh, look like a major back block to me. Yep. Oh, Ninja, please. He However, saw a little bit of daylight, but he couldn't turn sideways enough to get through it. He tried. However, that last pass was enough to give Dallas the lead. Dallas currently with 63 over Pioneer Valley, 60. That is a lead change, ladies and gentlemen. If you're following the DNN drinking rules, take a drink. So it looks like our next jam, Pioneer Valley, will be starting on the jammer line unopposed, maybe? But I'm just an announcer. I don't really know what I'm talking about. That's the way that it will work. Probably will start. It doesn't mean he may necessarily come off the bench and be standing out there. But looks, he may join them shortly. Looks like an official timeout here, Bob. All right. Just got a little clarification there. Marsh Travolta will be able to start the jam standing up from the box. All of our guys out on the track waiting for that first whistle. Pioneer Valley forcing the no-pack situation by taking a knee. Oh, Marshall Volta! My. Woo! He Call. gets a shoulder to Atomic, pops up from the knees, lifts him off the ground, and sends him backwards. Oh, man, I felt that from here. Oh, no, Marsh Travolta heading back to the box. Power jam situation now for Dallas. Yeah, it looked like it was blocking out of bounds. And so now that we have Ninja Please having served the amount of time the other jammer had served, we have a jammer back out on the track. There is often time some confusion with that whole jammer in, jammer out, jammerless jam. You have to serve your time, and Ninja Please did exactly that. And he has lead. Oh, nice move as he comes to the inside, cuts to the outside. <laughs> And it looked like the block he was going to take was on his way to the penalty box. Another five points. Grand slam going to Ninja, please. Dallas doing a great job of increasing that brand new lead they just got. Just under 25 minutes left in the half. You know what they say. 
Um, no. What do they say? It's anyone's game. Yeah, there you go. Well, if you're playing on one of those two teams. It, well, sure. And it's not my game. Well, we win regardless. Yeah, that's the announcers true. always win. Yeah. Looks like Dallas starting unopposed. Who do we have out there, Bob? Right now we have number 32. And you know who that would be? Who is it? Tell me. I will. That's Haterade. Don't be drinking that Haterade. I know. Sugar Daddy. He's not. On the sidelines. The, the Haterade off of... is not going to put electrolytes into your body and make you feel better. It's going to make out. you feel spiteful. I agree. I tell you, it's good to see Sugar Daddy. I haven't seen him in a long time. Fun to bump into him for a change. And we just got the official clarification number 615. Mars Travolta fouled out of the rest of the bout. Too much seed time, I would have to say. I would agree. That unlucky number seven. Unlucky number seven. Pioneer Valley with a heavy three-man rotation for their jammers, taking Mars Travolta away is going to make quite oh, a difference. Oh, look at that. Nice tip, Tom. He's got a little Walenda in him. That is Haterade. He's your lead jammer. And right there, Haterade coming in with enough speed, Ida, that he's got to push him way too far outside. they got to let him go. A lot of skaters right here in the box. Dallas with two blockers. Pioneer Valley still with their jammer and a blocker. Not a lot of pack out there. And Haterade really being able to do laps here. Pretty much unfettered. Dallas really using and abusing this minute in the box for Pioneer Valley. 20 point lead right now for Dallas. Until right now, which it turned into 25. Yeah, Dallas doing a nice job of running the trap a couple of times on that. That's going to be big, big points for Haterade to put up. And that's coming off of two really nice jams by Ninja Please. And all of a sudden, we've got a jump of 85-60 in favor of Dallas. Looks like Dallas will start the beginning of this jam in a post. It's a good way to start when you think about it. I agree. And that's going to be Archie Nemesis. And Pioneer Valley doing a heck of a job walling up and keeping him back, but they can't keep him forever. Lead jammer for Dallas. I think he's sponge-like. <laughs> he just kind of we... squished and got through there. I don't know how that happened. It was impressive. That's all I know. Yeah, me too. And there we go, Jurassic Park from the box through the pack. Not lead jammer, but still hopeful to score points for the Dirty Dozen. Oh, a fall right there. Nice jump, though. Number 84, Will Jettison. Will Jettison, unofficially the tallest man in roller derby. I'll buy that. He's a tall guy. He is. Very agile, too. That was a nice leap. Pioneer Valley requesting a timeout. This official timeout brought to you by Spinland Media. Spinland Media for all of your media needs. Make sure and check them out online, spinlandmedia.com. And, of course, we, are, we want to remind you that the big Apple Beatdown DVDs can be can be purchased. Stop by the Big Apple and get your. Blah, blah, blah. Let me try that again. Stop by the Big Apple Beatdown merch booth. Fill out an order form and get every Big Apple Beatdown bout on DVD. Each DVD is fifteen dollars, or you can buy all eight for eighty. Now I'm not great at math, but I'm thinking that the all eight games for eighty is a better deal. Uh, yes, I would concur. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you. And I know there's tons of derby left today, but I don't think that it's too early to start talking about the after party, my friend. Never. Never too early. Kodiak's 1815 Broad Hollow Road, a mere five minutes down the road, Farmingdale right here, beautiful Long Island. Make sure you hold on to that wristband. You get in for free. I do? Oh, yes, you do, my friend. Oh. I'll probably get kicked out for free, too. <laughs> Stay tuned for that.
Dr. Spankenstein out on the line for the Dirty Dozen. Up against Ninja, please. Ninja, please. I barely saw him out there. He's a ninja. Looks like each team skating down a blocker. Dallas taking their sweet old time coming across that pivot line. Finally, they're gone. There they go. And they're not able to pick up Spankenstein. Instead, he's going to get out in front. He's going to be your lead jammer. Shenanigans. No, I'm sorry. I'm going to be wrong on that. Both are going to pull minor infractions. There is no lead jammer. Ladies and gentlemen, put on your seatbelt. Please keep your arms and legs inside the car at all times. This is the two-minute... This is going to be the two-minute MRDA ride. My tray is in the upright position, so I am okay. There we go. Two long minutes right here, full of men's derby action. And Spankenstein looking to get some help from inside. But look at that. He's getting, Matt Matomic's going to run him to the inside of the track. Davy Jones with the hard hit on Ninja. Please knocking him to the inside on turn one. Oh, my new, uh, my new derby crush there, Rhino, laying a hard hit on oh. Dr. Spankenstein. As well he should be, right? Rhino can hit. Oh. There we go, Pioneer Valley, four points on the board. Dallas still holding that lead. Pioneer Valley closing up that gap. And Spankenstein doing a nice job of getting through a very difficult pack. And with Ninja Please now through, Spankenstein's got an opportunity to take another run at it. This is exactly what the Dirty Dozen wants, Bob. Power jam situation. They'll be starting this next jam off unopposed. And it is the one, the only, Mr. Fancy Socks himself, Jurassic Park, known for his 25, 30-point jams. Ninja, please, will be sitting down for two minutes. Not exactly sure what he did, but it was bad. It was super naughty. It was super, super naughty. Even even more so what Pioneer Valley wants right here. Oh, official timeout. Pioneer Valley currently at 66. Dallas with the lead with 90 with a two-minute power jam. That's it's anyone's game, my friend. It's anyone's Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Oh, that's what happened. He got his fourth minor plus the major. That equals two. Four plus one pl equals two. Who knew? It does in that situation. Oh, Jurassic look at that. Park. Jurassic Whoa. Park. My gosh, does he leverage himself as he comes through that pack without falling over? He's going to be your lead jammer, and he is off to the races. I dare say that man hovered through that pack. Dallas holding that wall up front. Crimson wall of pain. Dirty Dozen getting in there and breaking it up. Boy, oh, oh, what a nice whoa. sidestep. My goodness. Holy moly. Quite impressive. Grand slam for the Dirty Dozen. I don't know that I've seen that move pulled off that quickly before. All I know is it looked good. Jurassic Park. Hunting for another Grand Slam. Can he find one? He sure does. Five points for the Dirty Dozen. Well, and the Dirty Dozen got plenty of people to trap in the back, which is what they do. And so they decide they're just going to let Jurassic Park go. Looks like Ninja Please serving another minute in the box. That's a three-minute power jam. Oh, hard hit there, oh. Bazooka Joe. Getting oh, back up. Oh, look at that. We've got Jurassic Park skips the inside line. 
sticks the landing, the Canadian judge would even give him a nine on that. <laughs> what a run by Jurassic Park, everybody. Let's make some noise. Thought I was looking at a little bunny rabbit right there with an amazing wow. jump like that. Man. Ooh, and look at that Pioneer Valley closing up that gap. 85 to Dallas is 99. What Dallas a, still with the oh lead, man, but. What about? Woo. Dallas currently coming into this at the sixth seed, Pioneer Valley at the fifth. You can tell that they are so close right here. And right now the penalty is just killing Dallas. Dr. Spankenstein unopposed out there for a power jam, Dirty Dozen. Dallas with blood in their eyes, all they're thinking about is stopping Dr. Spankenstein. The well, thing about Spankenstein and Jurassic is they are so nimble and amazing. Their lateral movement is so amazing. They're very hard to contain. I completely agree. I feel that the facial hair Look might have that. something to do with that. Oh, and there that's you go. Amazing. Again, that's amazing. That's amazing footwork and lateral movement. I don't know how he stays up during that. Very impressive. And considering the fact that Jurassic Park and Dr. Spankenstein are pretty much going back and forth jamming. Not a surprise. As I think that they are generally the, the lion's share of the rotation. Looks like team captain for the Dirty Dozen, Will Jettison, heading to the sin bin to sit down for a minute. In the meantime, his teammate, Dr. Spankenstein, threw for another five points. Grand slam for the Dirty Dozen. Looks like that last grand slam evened up the score, currently tied 90-90. 15 minutes left on the clock. Oh, good call. Good call. Knocked to the inside, calling it off from his knees. Completely legal. Looked like Rhino, Rhino got a piece of him, knocked it to his knees on the inside. He calls off the jam. Oh, that Rhino. And as suspected, yeah, he picks up at least a point, which he does. Giving Pioneer Valley the lead. That one point was enough to give them the lead. That's another lead change. Take a drink, Pioneer Valley, 91, Dallas, 90. Jurassic Park back out on the jammer line for the Dirty Dozen. He's out there standing next to number 32. That's Haterade. And Jurassic Park goes from the inside to the center. He just barely beats Haterade out. And he's going to be your lead jammer. And this looks like a lot of expended energy for not a lot of reason. It's true. Jurassic Park agreed and called it off. Derby isn't always about the bronze. Sometimes it's about the brains. That's right. No, and that's very true. Uh, uh, you can teach people how to skate. You can't really skate derby unless you understand it in your head. I completely agree. Out on the jammer line, the MRDA's very own president, Dr. Spankenstein. And he is going to be up against Archie Nemesis. This song feels so hateful. <laughs> aye, aye, aye. Both our jammers working their way through the pack right here. Who's it going to be? Ooh, Bazooka Joe with a nice hit up front, but it wasn't enough to hold back Archie Nemesis, lead jammer for Dallas. Spankenstein. Oh. I'm sure anyone watching DNN felt that. That was quite the hit. Yeah, he got hit once, and then he got hit again when he was off balance. I'm oh. not sure which one they were penalized for. Little nail and hammer action. <laughs> Dr. Spankenstein threw that pass, not the lead jammer, but still able to score points. And right now... Dirty Dozen doing a nice job defensively on the Archie Nemesis. Looks like Archie was able to score one point, tying up the score. Dallas 91, PVRD 91. Less than 13 minutes left. I'm biting my nails. I'm on don't, the edge of my don't seat. Don't do that. Don't do that. <sighs> it's bad for your cuticles. It's true, actually. I'm not going to do that. No stranger to that jammer line. Jurassic Park out there for Pioneer Valley. And we got Matomic out there for Dallas. 
little slow start off that there pivot line. And Pioneer Valley taking up the back. It works exactly the way they want to. They're able to shove Matomic to the inside, and that's going to let Jurassic Kick Park get through. Not just get through, get through with uh -huh. lead. I, oh! I swear daylight is all he needs. <laughs> I'm talking like back of the door, you know, where the hinge opens yeah. up just a little bit, daylight. That's all he needs. It's impressive. And you got to keep in mind... This is back-to-back -back bouts right here. They just skated an hour against Puget Sound right before this bout. Yes. Dr. Spankenstein on the line for Pioneer Valley. He will rock you. And he's up against... Haterade. Ooh, it's so scary when you say it like that. Haterade with the quick lead and makes it through. Lead jammer for Dallas. Yeah, really quick feet. Nice, uh, nice jump off the jammer line for Haterade. It definitely gave him the advantage in getting through the pack. Dr. Spankenstein still working on that initial oh. pass. Oh, almost. He's like a slinky. Rhino Ooh. not only leans him, leans into him enough that he falls over. Rhino then jumps over a down player. They're neck and neck here. Both on scoring passes. Dallas with the lead right now, 96 over Pioneer Valley's 94. Dallas does have the lead jammer status. It's looking this over is his shoulder. called clock management. It sure is. Taking his sweet old time right there. Got the eye of the eagle there, watching the scene. Well, Spankenstein's smart to take off at that point in time. They can't afford to lose all those minutes. Exactly. Dallas obviously not going to give up the points. Jurassic Park back out on the line. Under the 10 minute mark now. Each team with a blocker in the box, just a shorter, smaller pack. Oh, and a nice, nice hip whip for Jurassic Park off of Bazooka Joe. Didn't quite get him what he wanted to, but it did give him a little extra speed. And with that lateral movement, he out jukes him. He's going to be out front. He's lead jammer. And Archie Nemesis out there going to have to try and chase him down, but he got a long way to go. Down two points. Not for long. Gets his points a little hit it and quit it action. Four points for Pioneer Valley there. They take the lead back from Dallas. Little derby trivia for you here, Bob. The Dirty Dozen was actually the first men's flat track derby team, despite the common misconception that it was the shock exchange. I was actually aware of that. It's a true story. It's true. Dr. Spankenstein on the line, number 113 for the Dirty Dozen. And we're going to see number 22 out there. That is going to be. Is that MC Slammer. That's right. You got to pray just to make it today, and he's going to get through that pack. Oh, my goodness. Too legit to quit right there. MC Slammer through the pack. Lead jammer for Dallas. And wow, he was through there fast. We haven't seen very many open lanes, but he found one, and he got through there in a hurry. Looks like a grand slam to me. Five points for Dallas. I tell you, you don't see Spankenstein held up very often. And they've got him pretty well pinned right now. That was a wall of crimson pain at the front. Oh, look at that. Oh, atomic. All over nice. him. Oh, all over him like a wetsuit. That was some fancy footwork. 
Oh, another Grand Slam five points for Dallas. Dallas taking that lead over the century mark. 106 points for the Dallas Deception. Ooh, this is Dallas's jam through yet again. Potomac Ripper showing him four points. Oh, no pass. No penalty there for one of the fellas. Still, four points is four points. And Spankenstein, they just really have his number on this jam. Potomac has been key in trying to hold him back. No surprise that jammer versus jammer would be a good matchup. And Rhino with a stop, drop, and roll. Fire safety there. He looked good doing it. That's all that matters. Yeah. I think he burns on nitrous oxide. He can't always see it. Oh, I see. He can only smell it. Yes. Whoa, whoa. Watch it. That's a long jam for PBRD. Jurassic Kick Park out on the line for the Dirty Dozen. Looks like a team timeout called here by Dallas. And we're talking only a 12-point differential. A lot of back and forth here, Bob. Let's say thank you to Pepsi once again. Yeah, let's, let's Pretty do old that. Water. Oh, water. Pepsi, Pepsi providing all of the old water being used by our athletes here this weekend. Also want to remind you that the concession stand has concessions. Ooh, concessions. I know. I love them. I know. I they, also heard tell that uh, they have adult beverages. They do. The barley and hops kind. Nice. Go get yourself one of those. Not that it makes Derby better. But uh, it doesn't hurt. No, it just makes life better. It does. It's an all-over kind of a better. Yeah. Six minutes left here in the second half. Very close bout. We're looking at the number five in the number six seed right here. There we go. Our first whistle. Pack is dancing. Dancing. Mr. Clean out there with some fancy footwork. Not really any uh, forward movement, but uh, little, doing things. Uh, it's kind of like the hokey pokey. <laughs> he put his left hand in. I think it was his foot all the way though. Yeah. Pioneer Valley obviously wanting to take off. Dallas, not so much. Jurassic taking a tumble there. Bazooka Joe, the last line of defense. Couldn't I tell you, that was a nice job, too, by Haterade. As he comes through and he just really kind of leverages himself against Bazooka Joe. He's going to run him wide and create that space. Wow, oh, nice quick step by Haterade. Going to put some more points on the board for the deception. Looks like Pioneer Valley was also able to put points on the board there. Team timeout being requested by Pioneer Valley's Dirty Dozen. Again, lots of Derby love going out to Platinum Sponsor for the MRDA Championship bouts here. Cheese Ball Bearings. Cheese Ball Bearings with the Z if you want to check them out online. Three fancy lines of bearings named the Cheddar, the Gouda, and the Swiss. Make sure you check them out. They are here on rank one. Go on over and visit them if you need some bearings. That's right. And I also believe they are a sponsor of the championship. Of the, uh, they are headlight sponsor of our championship, Bob, and providing the uh, trophy this evening. Ooh, fancy trophy. Nice. Make sure you stick around for the awards ceremony at the end. Don't go anywhere. This is a day full of amazing men's roller derby. It's the whistle. Skaters are heading back out to the track. 
Number 78, getting down on his knees, kissing that jammer line out there for the first time. Mr. David Jones jamming for the Dirty Dozen. Yep, Dr. Spankenstein going to take his fourth intentional, it would appear. If you notice, Bob, the Dirty Dozen skaters have these little patches on there, and those are their bouts. If you, you can tell who the old school guys are, because they have so many patches, it's practically taken up half their shirts. Oh, really? I did not know that. See? A little FYI? A little trivia? i got to hang out with you more often. You're oh, informative. I do what I can. Both our jammers off the line. Not a lot of camo and khaki oh. out there. Two blockers in the box. Bazooka yeah. Joe happened to let him go. Yeah, Archie Nemesis. Lots of juking and jiving out there. Does a nice job. Gets himself through pretty cleanly. Definitely tough out there for a jammer that doesn't have a lot of blockers. Davy Jones doing a heck of a job out there. Working his way through that big old wall of red. Oh, look at that. Rhino's being leveraged from one side, yet leans outside and is still able to plant a nice big hit on Davy Jones. Not that I needed any more reason to love him, but that was good enough. No, uh, Rhino, Rhino playing very well out at Fort Wayne when they played out there in May. Bazooka Joe trying to knock Rhino out so that Davy Jones could come back in unsuccessful in that hit. Dallas using this here opportunity to increase that lead 124 to 100. Oh, look at that. Metomic standing there. Archie Nemesis jamming for Dallas, but I do not believe he is the lead jammer. He's unable to call it. Oh, especially since he's heading to the box. Power jam situation for the Dirty Dozen. Davy Jones able to put four points on the board for the Dirty Dozen. Yeah. Great jam by Davy Jones. But it looked like he took an awkward fall. I think he's hurting. That was a tough hit he took there. Rhino was picking on that poor boy. He'll do that. They do. Jurassic Park out there solo on the jammer line. <laughs> Jurassic Park off the line. No pack situation caused by his teammates. Oh, oh okay. major back block. <laughs> I think they're okay. funning. I was like, are they dancing? Uh, no, are they I fighting? They, I thought they were fighting. They then were funning. I, then I knew they were funning. thought they were dancing there. <laughs> these, these crazy guys. Archie Nemesis sprung from the box there for Dallas. Just under three minutes left. Will Jettison laying a hit there. Dr. Spankenstein knocking out Archie Nemesis, forcing him to come back in behind him. Yeah, it looks like that might have been, kind of, might have been a high block. And looks, when you're tall, that'll happen. It's true. Looks like Jurassic Park making it through that initial pass. Juke into the outside. Little hip whip from teammate. Nice job. Five points. Grand slam for the Dirty Dozen. Archie Nemesis having a little difficulty getting through the pack on this go-round. Dirty Dozen. Oh, Rhino, just just a pack saving. He gets a hold of him just enough to get him outside. Will Jettison is going to get a wedgie. <laughs> <laughs> that was a heck of a whip. The old wedgie whip. Often deadly. <laughs> no. Now you have killed a few men and changed a few genders. <laughs> oh, watch out. I I always wonder if these guys have cups. I pray that they do. Aw, oh, little jammer line on the love. MRDA president, Dr. Spankenstein out there for the Dirty Dozen. 
Looks like we're going into an official timeout. And is there timeout? And it looks like Jurassic Park is going to go in and jam while Dr. Spankenstein's going to go fill in a slot in the pack. Dallas will be starting the next jam with two blockers in the box. Going to give that pack advantage to the Dirty Dozen. And if you'll notice, the Dirty Dozen has a very nice cheering section over here between turns three and four. Very excited for their gentlemen here well, at I, the champs. I tell you, the Dirty Dozen travel really, really well. When both the women and the men's teams came down to Fort Wayne, they were very well represented. Very PB impressed. Oh, absolutely. PBRD was the first flat track roller derby organization to have both a men's and a women's team. So lots of love coming from ladies, guys, the whole league. Oh, what's what do we have here? A little, it's a face off. A little face off. Oh, nice job. <laughs> face off or not, ladies and gentlemen, that is Jurassic Park through the pack lead oh, jammer for the Dirty God. Dozen. He never ceases to amaze me. Matomic, an amazing athlete, but it was just that bump and a little inside lane was all that Jurassic Park needed. Pioneer Valley, 113, Dallas with 129. That's going to change right here on this pass, thanks to Jurassic Park. And I tell you, he may have got around Matomic the first time, but Matomic wasn't going to let him do it again. Certainly was not. Dirty Dozen able to put four points on the board. Dallas with a goose egg. And at this point, we're looking at a mere 12-point difference. It's coming down to this here possible last jam. Dr. Spankenstein's going to be out there for the Dirty Dozen. MC Slamma doing it for Dallas. And of course, once this wraps up, we want to remind you that the Gatekeeper's Puget Sound is already underway on the other side. And there we go. Dallas making it through. Lee Jammer hit it and quit it. He called it. And that's because the period clock was done. And it's going to be MC Slamma is going to have the last word in that one. Fantastic game, gentlemen. Put your derby loving hands together. Number five in the MRDA. This is the Dallas Deception. Classy guys. Love the sportsmanship. Love the sport. Great game. Whoa, whoa. Ninja, please. Watch it. <laughs> Ninja, please. Ninja, please. Quit push, then. <laughs> He's trying to get through the line. Aw, look. I love it with the hugs. You know those are some sweaty, sweaty hugs. Oh, yeah. That's all right. I tell you, that's what I love. Men's Derby has been such, so much fun, so refreshing for me. Uh, just really love the sportsmanship, love the level of competition, love Rhino. <laughs> Who doesn't? I know. And please do not forget about the number six Pioneer Valley Roller Derby's very own Dirty, Dirty Dozen. Dozen right here. Put your hands together. Hey, those guys fought. Those guys fought their asses off, and they show up with a roster about half the size of everybody else's. It was more like the Dirty Ocho. I think they were about the Dirty Ten maybe yeah. today. They didn't have a very big roster. They played hard. There's, there's a man who was a star in Fort Wayne right there, Mongo. And poor Mongo separated his shoulder earlier I, this year. I know. That's Woo. what I heard. When I heard that he probably wouldn't wouldn't be skating much, I was really disappointed. 
an amazing bout right here. Both teams putting up quite the fight. We now have our fifth and sixth place. Soon we will have our fourth, third, first, second, and first. Bob Noxious, it has been a pleasure. Yes, it's been very fun. I know. I've, a first, and hopefully not a last. Certainly not. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, you're welcome.